so here I've got my character. I thought it'd be a good idea just to animate a short little puppeted segment just so you could get an idea of what my personal workflow is like. Another option that I'm going to use while I'm using my transform tool here is this button right here, which is peg selection mode. When that's turned on, it'll allow me to just click on the pegs rather than the drawing layers. So that's pretty useful. And since I'm doing puppeted animation, it takes a lot of space on my timeline. You can see how many of these layers there are. And I'm also going to hide my parameters since I'm not using that right now. And I'll stretch out my timeline so I can get a better view of all the layers that I have. I can also check which parts have deformers on them by selecting this master peg here and then clicking my show deformers button up here. And that'll show me all the parts that have deformers on this rig. And when I'm not using any of the deformers, I'll deselect and then click that button again to hide all of my deformers. And I'll start by moving the biggest pieces first, like her master peg, to put her into position. Let's get her arms in place. So I'm going to have her getting ready to roast the fish over the fire. And here I'm trying to move my arm, but it's not selecting my hand. So that's because I'm actually lower in the hierarchy. So I need to go up in my hierarchy, and I can do that by pressing B. And I can press that again to select the whole arm, and press that again to select both arms. Press it again, it goes to the upper body, and I press it again, it selects the upper body plus the skirt, and again, and now we're on the master peg. And if I want to go down in hierarchy, for example, if I'm on my arm hierarchy here, I can press Shift B, and that'll go lower in my hierarchy. So that's really useful to know for puppeted animation. And I use that hotkey a lot. And here, this hand isn't really working for this stick, so I'm going to have to redraw it. So I'm going to take my transform tool, select the hand, and then I'm going to use this button here, center on selection, which will show me where my layer is. So since I have the peg selected, it's selecting the peg. Then I can use this triangle to drop it down. And here's my drawing layer here. So I'm going to go to frame two and insert a blank frame. So that way I can use frame one as reference for my hand. And I'll turn on my onion skin so I can see the style of the hand and try to emulate it. And I'll also use my eyedropper tool and select the outline color. Then on frame two, I'll draw a new hand for her. So now I have a new hand that I've created. So I can take that frame and drag it onto frame one. And now we have our holding hand right here. So this is a new hand. And the way swapping frames works is that old hand that is no longer on our animation, it still exists. So if we go into our library and we look at this window up here, our drawing substitution window, we can drag this box to pick what hand we want. So for example, if this was a mouth and it had all the different mouth shapes in it, you could select what frame you want it to switch to. So for example, frame 10 here and switch to the first hand or mouth or whatever object it happens to be. It'll switch to that frame in your timeline here. So it starts with frame two, then on frame 10 switches to frame one, then on frame 20, I could switch it back to two. So that's how you do drawing substitutions. But we don't need these, so I'm going to click where all these frames change and click my remove key exposure. So it just stays on the grabby hand there. And now we can continue to pose her. So here I have a leg, which is facing the opposite direction that I want it to face. So to flip something horizontal, I can select the peg of that layer and click this button up here, flip horizontal. It's also in my tool properties if I have my transform tool selected. So there's flip horizontal, and now my peg is facing the other way. Also, if I were to select a drawing layer, the way to flip that horizontal is to use your arrow tool, select the artwork, and then click these buttons over here, flip horizontal, flip vertical. So it's important to know the difference between flipping your artwork versus flipping a peg. If I ever mess any of these positions up or really screw up the scaling, and I want it to reset back to its default position, I can go to animation and reset or the hotkey of R and it'll reset back to its original position. So now that I have a pose that I'm pretty happy with, I can minimize my master peg. And just to make sure there's a keyframe on everything, I'm going to select my master peg and press my add keyframe button. So that'll make sure every peg has been keyed. So that's super important for puppeted animation is to make sure you're keying your entire pose. So now I'm ready for my second pose which I'm going to start on frame number two. So that way, while I'm working on my pose, I can flip back and forth between these two to see how well they're working. And here for this little weight shift, I want to skew my leg just going to the left just a little bit, just kind of subtly. So I'm going to use my transform tool and just select the edge of my artwork right here so I get my skew icon. 
and I'm just going to skew it to the left a little bit. But <laughs> you'll see it goes kind of crazy. That's because our pivot point is so close to the top here. So because I have my transform tool selected and not any of my advanced animation tools, I can move this pivot temporarily down to the bottom here, and then I can skew my leg just a little bit, and I can even move my pivot around while I'm working. And if I click off of it and click back on, our pivot's back in place. So I haven't messed anything up. So that's a really good way to just temporarily move something if you need the pivot to be in a different place. So the action I'm planning on doing is she's gonna slowly lower her fish to the fire, and then when the seagull comes, she'll reel back a little bit and look at the seagull. So for this pose, again, I'm going to key on my master peg here. So it keys all of my body parts. And I'm going to have this be the anticipation before she reels back. So she's going to lean forward just a little bit more. And this pose is going to be my final position. So I'd like to copy some elements from my first pose here. So I'm going to select my key on my master peg with this minimized. So I select all of my motion keys and I can hold control and drag it here to copy that same pose. And I'll even give her a change of expression here by drawing her a new mouth. And since I want to just work on the mouth by itself without any of these transformations going on, since if I turn my onion skin on, my mouth is over here since my position was over there in my last frame. So that doesn't make the onion skin very useful here in the camera view. So this is an instance where the drawing view would come in handy. So here, with the mouth on its own layer, I can reference this onion skin a lot easier. So here's a really neat trick for doing a overshoot and then a settle back in. So here I've got my final pose and maybe I make it a little bit more extreme than I actually want it to be. So what I can do now with my master peg minimized like this, I can take this key and move it down and now we have this motion in between. So if you don't see that, if there's no motion, we can just click this frame right here and you can see it's red indicating it's a stop motion keyframe. So I can select it and convert it to a motion keyframe by clicking this button. And now we have this motion. So now we can pick our settling pose, which I think right about there looks pretty good. You don't want it to be too different. So there's our settling pose. So now what I can do is I can take that settle pose and move it past our overshoot. And since this is a stop motion keyframe, I can convert it to a motion keyframe. So now just to give an idea of what this is doing, it goes into the original overshoot pose that we had from before, and then it settles down into a settled pose. So this is a brand new pose that we created by just setting a keyframe on one of these interpolations here, and then dragging it where we wanted it to be. So because it's a computer interpolation, we'll have to modify it a little bit, but it's a great way to start off to get a quick overshoot and then settle. For deformers, if I ever want these deformers to go back to their original position, what I need to do is I need to select each one of these points while holding down shift, and then click this button up here, reset current keyframe, and that'll reset it back to its original setup position. And you can also apply that just to one of these nodes if that's what you want to do too. So now that we have our main poses, let's time them out. But before we do that, I'm going to shift select all of these frames, and I'm going to convert them to stop motion keyframes by clicking the stop motion button. And you'll see they'll all turn red. So that way, when I time them out, there won't be any interpolation, and I can just look at them in a stepped sort of view. So to add timing between keyframes, I can click the plus button on my keypad to add frames afterwards, or I can press the minus button to subtract frames afterwards. So again, I have my master minimized so that I'm modifying all the keys at once. So I'll use plus and minus on these different keyframes to time them out. So now that we have our animation all timed out, in the stepped view, we can start adding motion in between these frames. So I want this first pose to hold for a little bit, so I'm going to go forward by a couple of frames and just add another keyframe. So it's a duplicate of the first pose. And when I add a new keyframe, it automatically adds motion for me. So this motion is linear by default, which looks pretty stiff and robotic. So let's set it to an S curve. So it's a little more natural. Then I want that frame to hold for a little bit. So I'll set another keyframe, which is just a duplicate of this pose. 
And then here is the anticipation. So I'm going to do a slow out for that one, which is this curve right here. And then on this keyframe, I'm going to add motion to my overshoot. And for that, I want it to be a slow in, which is this curve. So it's going to start slow and then pop into the overshoot. And then here I have a big long settle. So I'll add motion there and I'll set the S curve for the easing on that one. So now we have some really simple puppet animation. So it's a starting point. Let's, uh, let's continue to plus it up a little bit. So one thing that I keep in mind is I'll usually do facial animation last. I'll try to get body motion correct first because body language is a lot more important to read in animation than facial expressions, which are important too, but the body is the biggest shape that we see. So if that's expressing the attitude that we want, then any facial animation we do will just add on to that. And another easy way to plus up some animation is to add a little bit of squash and stretch on the master peg. Very subtly though, it can be really easy to overdo this. So I'll usually just add just a little bit. It's almost barely noticeable. But it gives kind of a nice squishy sort of sense to your characters. So I think that body motion is okay. It's not going to win any, any Oscars or anything, but <laughs> it's okay for now. Um, the next thing I'll do is I'll add drag onto the points where I want drag. So one good place to put drag is in the hands. In between two keyframes, like here, I'll just go in the middle and I'll just rotate my hand so that it drags behind. So it'll be mostly noticeable between this settle here. There's a pretty big change of direction here. So here in the middle, I'm gonna have it still facing upwards towards our last position, and then it'll settle in. So now our hand has some drag to it, and I can do the same with our lower arm as well. And one important thing about animation is you don't want everything to arrive at the same spot at the same time. It looks pretty unnatural. So one thing we can do really quickly is just select our arm peg by using that hotkey of B and then going back one frame and then using our plus button and that will delay our arm by one frame. You can see the arm keyframe right here. We can expand all of our layers by highlighting this master peg and pressing nine. And if we scroll down, we can see here that all of our arm keyframes have been advanced by one frame because we only had the arm peg selected when we added a frame to the end. So now when it settles, the body settles and the arm has one extra frame of settle, just to kind of break it up a little bit. So I'll also add that drag to her hair here. And I'll also add a bit of drag to her hat here. Then same in the overshoot. I'll add a little bit of overshoot onto her hat. So now that I've got my body kinematics all finalized, I want to start doing facial animation. So I think the only thing I want to do is I just want to add a blink when she changes eye direction and expression here to kind of help sell that a bit more. So I'm going to select her eye here and I'm going to use my find layer button here, center on selection to find my eyelid. And here when I select the eyelid, you'll see in my library window, there's drawing replacements for her blink cycle. So let's figure out where we want her eyes to be closed probably about right here. So I'm gonna select the closed frame for these two eyelids here. Then I'm gonna go back one frame and select the frame right before the blink and put those there. So she starts to blink, then the blink happens. It'll hold for two frames. And then here, we'll have this end of the blink here. And then on this frame, it'll go back to our eyelid number one. So you can see with the eyes, we have our motion keyframes happening on top, and then our frame-by-frame -frame animation happening underneath. So that's the basics of animating a puppet in Toon Boom Harmony, is your pegs will contain all of your motion keys, and then your drawing layers will contain all of your frame-by-frame -frame animation and drawing replacements. So now that we know how to animate frame-by-frame -frame animation and puppeted animation, let's add some special effects to this fire over here.